Hello, my name is Rebecca Bilkow and I'm going to read a few poems from my new sequence called Sunday's Child, which was published by Wayleave on July the 1st, 2020. I was an illegitimate child and a while ago I wrote a poem about the imagined night of my conception. It struck a chord with people they even wrote to tell me about it because although illegitimacy isn't a thing anymore, it doesn't mean that the stigma that was attached to it right up until the 1960s just went away. So I thought, okay, I'll take the, the lid off that. I should say that I've had a really good life. I'm one of the lucky ones. All my parents, I collected quite a few, were great. Um, I had a fantastic stepdad that I called Dad and a father who I call a very good friend. Um, and you'll find out about my mum. She, even though she's been dead for 10 years, still speaks for herself. Ma said the nuns didn't like her, claimed she conjured devils unspecified, but likely rock, rock, rockin' in flaming petticoats to Manchester and back. Her and her ember red hair, likely lippy, 17, she'd have shown Lucifer himself her, his paces. Ma called the home St. Bigots, said the swelling girls were sent to, the, to learn their proper places giving birth a fringe benefit. Thrifty, those high Anglicans. Ma learned lessons including skivying, humiliation, and surrendering your baby to suitable parents. Ma didn't know if money changed hands. None of the girls were defiled by the profits of their labors. Ma sang, we're going to praise the Lord around the clock or tonight without laughing. Here's me. First photo. Bear sit upon, sat on a gleaming board. Ma said she scrubbed it with rook feathers at first light. Joke. Stop crying. Someone kind has knitted me a vest on spoon stems, wonky, sturdy, slightly shiny, like my firm, bold fists scooping the tasty air. Ma holds me straight, knuckles blotched, nails plain, cut straight. Squint and they explain her later marigolds, her manicures. Her arms are tensed against trembling. On the back of the photo, in extravagant six-form script, my daughter, aged about three months, I'm six weeks, tops, and windy. Probably we both are. Time drags for teenagers who can't remember fun. Foundation myth. Our first round of that dumb, enduringly Victorian town, solid as the fecund little queen between offspring on a plinth near the crumbling workhouse where everyone was sure not to gossip, but honestly couldn't help wondering. Our pram, billed like a little landau, twice the age of Ma, is spit and polished shiny. Nan, tweed coat patched with second-hand eau de cologne, plonks me in, strolls out. Ma's scolding the autumn air red under her breath. She's always angry when she's scared. But here we go anyway, me laughing, one of my many precocious talents. Six little girls balancing home along the not-so-tall church wall. 
imagining circus spangled cozies under gingham uniform frocks. I'm wobbling too much to aspire to high wires and to cover the totter blurt some splinter of knowledge snagged when I was a little pitcher with big ears. What isn't relevant? Each pumped with self-righteous spite, my mates pitch me into the nettles. Don't know your dad's name though, do you? I wave my scepter, adjust my tiara, my diadem, and make them disappear. My dad's a spectacular spy. A czar on the run. Dangerous. Dashing. On his way. The truth. On her deathbed, Ma got the trick of the baby alarm I'd installed. Called me. She could still sit up then just. Learning to die was a skill she was deferring. You'll want to know about your father and me, she said. I stopped breathing. We'd mythologised my genesis years ago. Hidden the photos of the files so well, it took 50 years for her to find them. I've been trying, trying, but I can't remember. Those, the, though those were our crying days, we both stayed dry-eyed. After she died, all I could recall was her driving to London to fix my broken heart. It was my birthday. Her white mini club room was filled with daffodils. She also had vases. It was spring, you know, an ocean of yellow outside the nursery windows, and you, in my arms.